established in a place called Reedsmere, which is a, on a stately home in Cheshire in England, and uh, it's in the north of England. And there was perhaps 100 fish in the lake at the time. They were introduced in 1958. And it was like talked about as a cult water, you know, it's supposed to be very difficult and all the rest of it. And I, I gradually progressed to that place and went on there. And I found myself doing the same as everybody else, you know, we, we, we just got on the boilies. Uh, people had fished it previously using uh, bolt rigs with sweet corn, rowing it out in boats and doing a mass baited area of sweet corn. And uh, we'd got on the boilies and I wanted to do it my way. So we were using our own rudimentary homemade baits. We used to use those wrist rockets, you know, the, the, the handheld catapults, the, uh, the power elastic ones. So we put each individual bait in, fishing about 70 yards out, and occasionally you'd catch a fish, you know, and uh, everyone was doing the same. And I thought, do you know what? It's boring this. You know, it's almost like having a game of cards where you get dealt a good hand and it might be my turn, it might be someone else's. And one day I was coming to the end of a session and I seen a load of fizzing right out in the middle of the lake. It's like 40, 43 acres of the lake. But we never touched the middle of it, so it's a sanctuary. So the fish were just safe there, you know. And I thought, even though I couldn't get the free offerings out, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to try one of these baits I've made. Now, I've got some similar. This would be the sort of thing I made. A bright fluorescent bait. I'd got some bright dyes and I'd made a, a bright orange bait like that. And at the time, I'd got a, one of the very early batches of Scopex that came out, Reductions and Scopex. So I'd made a big bright orange bait, pop up. And I, I thought about all the silt on the bottom of the lake and I thought, you know what? You could easily just lose that if it goes into the silt. So I made a hook length that was really long. I put a four ounce lead on. And I got 20 minutes to go on the session, so I waded out, got my bright orange bait. This was 1981, slammed it out, and I'd got some quite advanced gear in them sort of times. I'd got uh, like three pound test curve of rods where everyone else had one and three quarters and two pounders. So I was used to doing a lot of sea fishing as well and doing long range casting. So I waded out as far as I could, blasted the single out, come wading back through to get to the bank and I felt the rod kicking and I'd got a fish on and it was an 18 pounder and it had been in seconds. So there was some guys fishing with us and they went, that's the biggest fluke we've ever seen in our lives. That's never, ever going to happen again. So I photographed the fish, put a new bait on, went out, banged it out again, got back, just putting the indicator on, on a needle in a line clipper, adjustable Robert's line clip, and the line whips out the clip and it was off again, a 19 pounder. And then I had to pack up and go to work. And I thought, what have I discovered here? So I went back again. I did four days at work on the airport, Manchester airport. Shot back down to like, couldn't wait. You can imagine how excited I was. I got down, banged two rods out at long range, two of the uh, bright orange Scopex jobby. Nothing happened. I thought, shit, maybe it was a fluke. And then, I'll never forget it, there was an earthquake. One of the very rare times you ever sort of a present when what happens and the whole lake shook and my bed chair shook and then a giant tree came down in the woods and uh, created a big wave and I thought what's going on you know it was biggest ever recorded earthquake at the time that was in Cheshire anyway uh, just after the earthquake stopped one of my rods ripped off and I had a 24 pounder which was a very big fish in them days then I had a 23 pounder and then uh, it went quiet and I had a, for a bit, then I had a 19 pounder. One thing was, I never got any in darkness, none, on the singles. But in the day, I'd get people gathering with swim, wait for it to happen in the morning. As soon as it came light, bam, bam, bam. So I started perfecting it and I started really working it. And I realised that I needed other colours because some people were saving up to get the gear. And they couldn't believe that I'd not got free offerings in. So I used to con them and uh, they said, how are you getting the freebies out there? I said, I'm not going to tell you. So they're all spying on me and everything, thinking that it couldn't possibly just be a single hook bait in 40 odd acres of water. And I knew quite well it was, obviously. So I just milked it for 18 months. And uh, I had, between the June and 
the start of the season and the 1st of September, I had 37 fish doing that, which was like, if you caught 10 in a year, that was a mental year normally, uh, in a whole year, that would be exceptional. So it was uh, in between work and fishing, it was incredible. Then I started uh, thinking I need to change the colours. So I went working for Duncan Kay at his bait factory for a little bit. And because uh, I was so obsessed with fishing, I just wanted a job in fishing. And when I was working for him, I said, uh, can you get me some white dye? And no one had ever done white dye. This was before Rod Hutchinson did the day glow white. And basically, uh, he managed to obtain some of the, uh, the white dye and I got him to get a fluorescent pink. So I tried it on his old Mid-North Ants Lake and I had nine in a day on, on my first session on there, which they thought was incredible, you know. And that was on the white bait. So that was the first time white baits were ever used that were day glow white. And everywhere I took it, it was crazy. Anyway, I went on Reedsmere the following season and I had 11 in the first 24 hours on the white singles. So that's how it all started really. I know it sounds a little bit uh, of a long-winded affair, but everywhere I took the single hook bait, generally it was amazing. And uh, you know, it was, it was way ahead of its time really.